This is the time to exhaustion for the five separate athletes. The red line here is the mean value, the average of all five. But notice that one of them went up a lot. This one went up a little bit. This one went up, or this one went up quite a bit. This one went up a little bit. And these two went down, which means we're not all white lab rats. We are heterogeneous as humans, and our responses are different. So there are two interpretations we could take from this, and that is a low-carb ketogenic diet is great for this guy, good for this guy, pretty good for this guy, and terrible for these two guys. Or the other interpretation is that we only gave them four weeks to adapt. And maybe some people do well in four weeks of adaptation, and some people need eight weeks. And what I can tell you from our experience with abs athletes subsequent to that is many athletes tell them to really fine-tune the low-carb diet and get the benefits and oftentimes greater benefits on this than on a high-carb diet, they have to be on the diet for two or three months. So duration of adaptation becomes important. But the key thing here is that humans don't switch from a high-carb diet to being able to optimally utilize a high-fat diet overnight. And you certainly can't do it mid-race as an athlete. You have to adopt this as a lifestyle and use it for a significant duration of time if it's going to uh, be useful to you. But there was a study published, now remember we published those data back in the early 1980s. There was a, pub stated, a study published in 2005 by a group from the Netherlands, and they did a study where they took 300 people, some of them were obese and untrained, some of them were highly trained athletes, but a whole cross section of the population, 300 people, and measured the peak rates at which their bodies could burn fat, that is, when you, put them on a treadmill and increase the exercise from stage to stage to stage, how much fat, what was the highest rate that anybody could burn fat? And of 300 people, the highest they found was 60 grams of fat per hour. And the average was half that, about 30 grams of fat per hour. And in this paper, they said the highest rate at which a human can burn fat during exercise is 60 grams an hour. That, and this is, this is still the standard accepted data. So my friend and colleague, Dr. Jeff Volek, who I really wish was here, but his day job got in the way of, he went back and took my dissertation, my thesis numbers from that bike racer study, and he calculated them in grams of fat per hour. Of the five bike racers, the lowest was 74, the highest was 112, and the average was 90. He said, Steve, there's really something important here. <laughs> And he just took my sterile data and put it in reference to what is published in the textbooks and said, this diet has the capability of change, dramatically changing how athletes can use fat. Some kind of pioneering athletes have adopted this, not as a short-term strategy, but as a lifestyle. And this is a picture, it's kind of hard to see, but this is a, you can see a pretty lean looking guy who's still upright. He's just run 100 miles over the Sierra mountains, from the east side of the Sierras to the west side of the Sierras. On, not on roads, but on mountain trails. It's called the Western States Endurance Run. Um, and uh, his name is, is um, Timothy Olson. Uh, he had been a very good runner before he went to low carb, but in the latter stages of these long races, he suffered what many ultra runners experience, which is nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And the reason, part of the reason for that is, is you can't store enough energy in your body as carbohydrate, as glycogen, to run 100 miles. And the rule of thumb for this race in the past has always been if you don't eat at least 6,000 calories of carbohydrates, you don't make it to the finish line. But having to, I don't know how many of you run and have tried to eat when running, but it, it's kind of a, a major um, problem for the body to go up and down like this and digest at the same time. And they get a lot of GI problems. But if you train their bodies to burn fat at double the rate, they have to eat much less carbohydrate. And so Tim Olson had adopted the low-carb diet about eight months before he, he ran this race. Here he's winning it. You see there's some kind of light on his side here. This is, that's, a, that's the last daylight of that day. And this is the first time that any runner finished this very race in daylight. He took 21 minutes off the all-time course record, uh, doing it on low-carb. And it really got the attention of the ultra-running community. But a lot of skeptics said it was a fluke or somebody gave him a ride on a, on a trail bike or something like that. So the next year, Tim came back and won it again. 